Good morning. I'm Gordon Blue. Welcome to the Church of the Holy Trinity in Juneau, Alaska. Welcome and thank you for joining with us in worship. This is the 13th Sunday following the Pentecost. Let's observe and make this a holy day together. Welcome. We'll pray together because we are in an uncertain middle passage where everyone is crying out for freedom and safety and where pressure and fear is coming from all sides. How are you getting along? How are you dealing with the isolation and uncertainty and bad news of infamous acts? Lately, I've begun to sleep a night in two segments. After four or five hours, I suddenly wake up and uh, I've found that it's best to then get up for a while and read. After an hour or so, I go back to bed and sleep until it's time to get up. Lately, I've been reading a book given by Lucy for Father's Day. She always sends good books. This one is. It was written by Robert McFarland and it's called Underland, A Deep Time Journey. McFarland is known for writing about the mountains, but this time it's the opposite. It's about deep chambers and caverns and passages and rivers underground. It's about the crossing of a moment in the immensity of time past and future. This morning I arrived at the midpoint of the book. I hadn't intended to read so far. I blame this on the chapter called Invisible Cities. Specifically, the section that began, the approach to the room of the flag is the only time I feel real fear in the Parisian catacombs. In it, McFarland describes the terrifying experience of slithering into a tiny, unstable passage that diminishes in size as it squeezes through the dark, buried far beneath the rumbling of underground trains. Reading this passage brought a surge of claustrophobic adrenaline that kept me awake for hours. Now, whether it brings fear or excitement, there is no denying the physical effect of adrenaline. It compels, pushing like a strong current. In the narrow straits of a middle passage, there is no turning back. We must push through. Scripture is full of these middle passages. Drawn by strange fire, Moses stepped from the exile of his old life into holy ground. He bared his souls and he hid his face in fear and he met I am, the Lord of creation. Through this crisis, he entered a new life, still in exile, but now strangely blessed and holy. In the gospel, Jesus now arrives at the middle passage of his exile. He sees the fearsome straits ahead. He refuses the comfort of his friend Peter, the stumbling block, the rock. He pushes past the tempter, the voice saying, turn back. He focuses on the divine I am, the Lord of creation. Passing through this crisis, he encourages his friends in terms they cannot even understand yet. Pick up your cross and follow me, he says. Now, life in the text and soul, they're the same word. It's a word that Jesus says four times in quick succession. If you try to save your own life, you will lose it. And if you lose your life for, the, for my sake, you'll find it. 
But what good will come to you if you own the whole world but forfeit your life, your soul? But what will you give to get your soul back? This is the narrow place, the unstable middle passage of Jesus in the Straits of the Gospel. Before this, we have the temptation and the healing, the miracles of nature, the pursuit by angel, by agents of Herod, the who do, I, do they say that I am and the who do you say that I am, all that's left behind. Ahead, we have the transfiguration with Moses and Elijah. The parables and the prophecies and the teaching all are focused on Jerusalem. And we have the coming defeat of death. For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. The I am who I am. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, craft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and help us through this middle passage of our times. The middle passage of lifetimes may not be the middle age of a life yet not lived out. The middle passage of an age may not be the year in the middle of a range of years. It may not be a temporal middle at all. But the crux, the crisis, the cross born at the center of a middle passage. A passage from which there is no turning back. It is possible that we are in a tiny, unstable passage that diminishes in size as it passes through the dark, far underneath the rumbling of underground forces. Isolated, uncertain, pressed from all sides by bad news and infamous acts, we're compelled, pushed by the strong current. In the narrow straits of this middle passage, there is no turning back. We must push through. Listen. The whisper of a current is the whisper of freedom on the other side of difficulty. Listen. The Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I've come down to deliver them. Listen. Jesus says, the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Listen, Paul wrote. He wrote to those suffering under systematic oppression and everlasting warfare. This is what he said. Let love be genuine. Heed what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Listen. That's the way ahead. That's the crossing of a moment in the immensity of time, the past in the future. It's the praise song of freedom, the promised delivery of the Lord, and the song of angels in the glory of the Father. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. 
Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. And do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, do not be afraid. Do not become stuck in the pinch and misery of human beings, truly. I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. 